<laughs> well, that was a great match, but that's not the final match of the day, Turner. It's not? Are you serious? We did we have another match? What match, Arashi? I believe it is our very own Indonesia against um, against Malaysia. No. Way. There you go. We We've been hyping the this Philippines? one up too. Dude, no, I, guys, 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 it's your fault. Oh, what, my fault? What? It's your fault. You curse the Philippines, and then you're gonna curse your own country. Oh, what in the world, Arashi? I remember Such this is life. again uh, a standby. Uh, what am I saying? A standby towards you know a, a rematch. Of the MLBB scene as well, Arashi. Indonesia versus Malaysia. Last time around, it was Malaysia being able to win it 2 to 0. I think oh. Malaysia and Indonesia played again in a best of one, but I don't know the results yet. I haven't seen the results. So if you guys can, you know, let us know in the comments, we'll be very grateful. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Indonesia and Malaysia, man. Wow. We were also hyping up Malaysia earlier on, by the way, saying that, okay, you know, Malaysia rise up moment. It's time for them to really make a statement. So who exactly are we cursing it, Turner? Because, you know, in my predictions, I went for Indonesia. If we go with that pattern, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sweating a little bit, just a bit concerned. Uh, <laughs> but what about you, Turner? What do you think? I... I'm anticipating this match, right? I'm anticipating this match because if we take a look at uh, like the standings and how it has been shaping up, it was Malaysia at number two in Group A under the Philippines. So you could even say that they have been able to create success as well, right? Being able to make it all the way to the playoffs. Uh, I think they lost one match as compared to the four matches that they played in their group hmm. because there are five regions in their group. So it's a little bit different to the group that Indonesia is in with only four regions. So there's definitely a fighting chance. And if like stats don't mean anything after the match that we saw earlier on, right? It should have been mm. a free win for Philippines not being able to drop a single match whatsoever up until this point, but still Cambodia won it. So is this going to be a trend of underdogs? Is that the story that we're being that's being built in now at ISF? Because if that's the case, then Malaysia definitely can go for it. But, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a look at the official team lineup here for Indonesia. We have Sini, Vivian Shell, Fumi, as well as Vival. So, this is a Team Vitality roster yep. that just won at SPS. Um, <laughs> this, if they win ISF, this will be their 21st championship since 2021. Them not dropping a single trophy in any particular tournament. So, it could be like an A-tier tournament, S-tier, hmm. local... Uh, international, all the tournaments that they've been participating in, they always get that number one position. And in their figurative uh, MCU Thanos gauntlet, this will be the only title, I believe, that they have not claimed yet, if I'm not mistaken. So if they really get this, then they are literally going to earn the whole completionist achievement and just gather everything and kind of complete the game that is Mobile Legends, right? Just go for the end game scenario immediately. So definitely a lot of people are believe that they are going to win, but a lot of people are also a bit nervous now because this is where it really matters, right? They've been so dominant. They've been we, uh, winning again and again. So the wins so far are kind of like just another day in the office, but this particular one, there's more stakes to be talked about. So I think that that is where this team has a chance to try and turn it around. We have Rosemary, we have Fafau, Annabelle, Ecstatic, and R. All Arr. going in, all R. Well, what was that R, Rashi? <laughs> that caught me off guard. You know, don't make me giggle too. God, bring it in. But again, oh, still the main five here for Malaysia as well against Indonesia to look for that final slot to get to Riyadh, to get to WEC, and to make it to you know represent their country as well you know I, you know you 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 talk a little bit because i really want to know what happened because i'm pretty sure indonesia and malaysia went in for another bo1 in the male scene for the grand finals in the playoffs but i i have to double check arashi real quick on the on the on the website on my trusty all website. right it's funny you brought that up because I, I don't i'm not particularly uh 
I, I do show up on occasion here, so I didn't really follow through all the way. There are a lot of details I definitely missed out on, which is why I've been visiting IESF.gg, just checking on it again and again, because I just, you know, wasn't sure uh, about what the happenings are, what the stakes are right here. So uh, we'll have to see. But for now, there's definitely some rivalry here. We always talk about Indonesia and Malaysia. Oh, serumpun, serumpun, right? You know, we're, we're, we're on the same team, same gang, kind of. But at the end of the day, you know, we're still rivals, man. And whichever scene you're watching, there is that feel of like, okay, you know, we're similar, but am I better than you are? Right? That's the question that has to be the back of any kind of any kind of person who is in who is in the competitive scene. It's not just the players, man, even the coaches. You bet when they're eating lunch or something, they're like, do we win against the Malaysians? Do we win against the Philippines? Like, hmm. You know, that's the kind of thoughts that come into your mind as a competitive person in general. Is that an insider in Oh Malaysia 110, Rashi? Oh, man. oh my lord. Okay, so in the group <laughs> stage it was a 2-0 for Malaysia and then they met again in the grand finals. And Malaysia won it against Indo 1-0. Yikes. Well, that's definitely terrifying news for us over in Indonesia. But on the flip side, man, for you Malaysians, congrats so far. Let's take a look at the drafting phase, though, for game number one. And we're going straight into it, man. No time at all. No break at all. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here for you all the way. For the side of Malaysia, though, Yu Song and the chip. Definitely pressure in the lane. But that global presence, we haven't seen the chip really prioritized as much as the Lo Yi or even uh, the Moscow actually or the Angela when you're talking about the global uh, global look. So that's an interesting option that Malaysia has opted for. It might be a uh, some kind of info they have over Indonesia here. But for Indonesia, Arlet and the X Borg, they definitely have their eyes set on that EXP lane. And with the Vexana banned early, early on, we just saw that Cambodia was able to use it to great effect whenever there's there's any attempt for some kind of all-in team fight. So that could be hinting at Indonesia going for something a bit more aggressive, a bit more death ball oriented. But with the Angela ban away, that leaves that maneuver, the Angela pick forced, uh, forcing into a link pick. It won't be available, but for Indonesia, it doesn't even matter, bro. It doesn't even matter, bro. It's the Ling, just immediately picked up. We have to see for Malaysia, what is the response? We've seen the Ling pop off again and again, and it's not really the easiest hero to really try and counter. Uh, on a prio basis, the Moskov could be an option here, right? Good crowd control for an assassin, good burst damage technically with the attack speed buff of the Abyss Walker. And who can complain about that global presence? Without the Angela available, they can go for the Lo Yi as well, actually. But they've shown the Fredrin for now. So it's going to be a classic utility jungle against assassin battle as the Harith. This was the strategy that was utilized by uh, the Filipino team, I believe. The Harith and the Fredrin here. So for Indonesia, mm -hmm. seeing the beefy member, beefy jungle and a strong gold inner here. Can they go for the Roger? Uh, they can't flex it any longer, but it can still be a so solid pick for their composition. I mean, technically, they can kind of wait, right? Oh, wait, no, they can't. I was thinking with the with the Harris and the Frederick already being picked up, that they can kind of wait. But this is their final pick here in the first phase that can definitely be banned out by Malaysia as they enter the second phase of the drafts. But it looks like absolutely no, they're not going to go for the Roger at all. They're going to go for the Terizla and the Claude instead. So the final pick in now for Malaysia. Remember, the Lua Yi is still open and available if they want to utilize that to get a little bit more pr map pressure across the map. It is a little bit vulnerable towards the Ling, but it really depends on the strategy, right? What kind of style they want to be going for, unless they want to pick up maybe an EXP laner here, right? Before it gets banned out. We've seen the Yuzong do great against Terizla. We've also seen, the, oh wait, but the Yuzong has been banned out. They have the CC as an option, but they go Ooh. for the Paquito. So, Paquito and Terizla hmm. in that EXP lane. What do you think about this matchup, Arashi? Terizla, Paquito? I think it's, whenever a Paquito is in the conversation, it's always a scale matchup, right? It depends on where, where 
how and when you land your skills, right? Because depending on how it's set up, if there's any minions around you as well, then it can give you a ton of HP when you're trying to go for those turns, for those trades. But now, against a Terizla, we have to see, of course, to begin with, what emblem is going to be used by both these EXP laners. And for now, we're going to move straight to the second phase. Whereas for Malaysia, it's a lot of burst damage. And if that's the case, I feel like they're gonna they're gonna want some crowd control. The Frederick can provide some, and so can the Paquito, but it's not very reliable, right? And of course, they do not want to get dove on. Uh, they don't want to get counter engaged massively as well, so they will ban away the Minotaur. You know, should they go for the Roger ban here, Arashi, away from Indonesia? Because hmm. Shell has been doing so well. Oh wait, but the Claude's been picked up, so they don't even need the Roger. Because I was thinking about the Roger <laughs> earlier on, because, you know, okay, forgive that mistake, because Shell yes. has been picking up Maniacs left and right with the Roger. Mm -hmm. So it's like scarred into my memory, and I'm pretty sure it's been scarred in a lot of these regions that have gone up against the Roger that Shell has brought up. But with the Claude, we've also seen her find so much success. Honestly, Malaysia, they need to be aware of the split pushing pressure that this Claude can have in the later stage of the game, especially after we get into the Lord Dances. And maybe that's why they picked up something like the Paquito, right? Very fast clear, can kind of control those far lanes as well. And in a 1v1 against the Claude, the Paquito can do good in that 1v1. So there's a lot of reasons as to why this Paquito has been picked up. Other than the fact that you mentioned about that skill matchup with the Terizla in the EXP lane. Mm -hmm. But it looks like the Grok is going to be eliminated away as well. We've seen uh, Viva, uh, Vivia, Vivian do so much on the Grok as well. So the Matilda also gets eliminated as does the Faramis. So that's two bands, the Vexana and the Faramis. And Malaysia go ahead and pick up the Valentina. So what do Indonesia pick up in the middle lane? Are we going to see a Lilia? That's something that we've seen uh, quite a bit so far. But the Lu Yi, oh. as it has been opened up oh. alongside with the Kufra, that is going to be detrimental in stopping this Harith if he does get to that point where he does deal damage. One of the main weaknesses of this Harith, despite him being able to go for Purify, is that crowd control, right? That constant crowd control coming through, not just from the Tyrant's Rage and Revenge, but also the bouncing ball that the Kufra can utilize as his kit. Yeah, the bouncing ball will definitely be a problem for the Bakito Valentina. The Herod and technically the Fredrin as well. So it's definitely a value pick right here. But that Lo Yi is where I'm quite uh, interested. We haven't seen the Lo Yi is really being put to as good of a, or as effective as a, as a hero as it used to be before the changes. But now they have options here. They can send the Ling away just to boost that roaming speed. They can use uh, the... Diversion into battle mirror image, clear the wave and come back strat of that the Claude can be comboed with. And for the side of Malaysia, it's gonna be a Baksha. And considering the game we just watched earlier, wait, hang on a minute, wait a minute, there's a Baksha and a Fredrin. Who's going where? Baksha Rome? Baksha Rome hasn't Who's been a thing where? for a long, long time, but uh, there's always been an argument to, you know, more ganks, more crowd control, and the passive that's always available even without a lot of items i'm guessing that's where it's gonna go but what about at this Paquito point who knows? jungle fredrin exp paquito jungle do you think that's a possibility i think it sure is it's a possibility right it can be done but i, I can't say for sure if it should be done right sometimes right. people are too preoccupied thinking about whether they could they don't stop and think about whether they should Right? So, uh, we have to wait and see, man. We've seen the Paquito actually being flexed into the jungle, and they actually won... No, did they win that game? I don't think they won that game, but we saw <laughs> the impact that it had. So, if mm. we're looking at this lineup right now with the Baxia, the Fredrin, and the Paquito, it's still definitely up in the air as we are moments away of coming into the game. A little bit of a, you know, salvation game, a little bit of an avenging game from Indonesia here. As, of course, their fellow brethren in the MLBB male scene has actually fallen prey to Malaysia. Will it be the same story once again, ladies and gentlemen, as we enter the semifinals? Our second semifinals of the day, but 
There you go. It looks like it is going to be a little bit more standard with the picks, despite it not being quite standard, right? Rosemary on the Fredrin in the jungle. We have Annabelle on the Boxia in the roaming position, and it will be Bea with the Paquito in the EXP lane going for Quantum Charge, actually. Okay, so Annabelle on the Boxia will be just leashing, just focusing down that. Uh, the orange buff for Rosemary on the Fredrin, just increasing the farming speed by that much. We've seen this being a new trend here. The roamers kind of assisting in clear in one way or another. But look at the mid lane here. That's going to be the three-man army walking down from Malaysia, wrestling away the Litho away from Indonesia. And despite having the low Yi, Indonesia seems to be still playing a bit more hesitant, just waiting for the right opportunity. Yeah, it looks like it is. And if we take a look at the gold lane, it does look like Shell is going to be able to wait a second. Vival, she's actually going to be caught quite low here from the damage coming through from Annabelle. We do see a charge here. Is this the moment? There'll be a lot of damage coming from Sydney though, as Vivian props the bouncing ball. Won't be enough damage for now. Ecstatic though, trying to throw back some damage, make it competitive. But the fact that the roamer is a Baksha, that really stops this Ling from being able to be free when it comes to the farming patterns. He can, uh, the Baksha can kind of match the mobility with the shield unity. And at least for now, until some sustain and some more damage is built up by the Ling, there's going to be a lot of times where the Baksha can kind of bully the Ling away. But technically right now, Vival on the Ling has been doing a great job of actually interfering with the jungle of the enemies, but wait a second in the top lane. That's a lot of damage being traded in right before this turtle. Arashi Bea should be forced to go in for the recalls. She's still waiting to try and maybe set up for an outplay, but Rosemary goes straight for the neutral objective for the turtle. In comes Vival with the Ling, going for it. It will be stolen though. Heavens of Blades as well to secure the first blood. Indonesia picking up some steam, going still for a bit more aggression. But showing again that when it comes to neutral objectives, you can't count them out. That's a war cry ling for you, ladies and gentlemen. That early game damage and that early game objective control is something to respect. Sure, in this 1v1 against Bea, it might be a different story because naturally the Paquito with that burst damage does put Vival in quite an awkward position, especially her being on such a squishy hero like the Ling. But Vival on the Ling earlier on, is she going straight for Sky Piercer? Is the question here. I, I think I guess we'll get a little you know peek into the items later on as this game progresses. But for the most part, in the first three minutes of the game, it looks like Indonesia are still holding on to control in terms of that objective play as well as ooh a diversion play too up top. That's a great read from Bea to really back away from the situation though. But for Indonesia, they're still doing pretty well when it comes to the maneuvers around the map. For Malaysia, whoa, hang on, Shell, taken very, very low, but here comes Annabelle, rolling down to the bottom side, going for the play, actually, 1v1 behind the turret with the Vengeance as well. The Roamer will take out the gold laner. Shell taken out, but look at Vival coming in to try and collect that gold, and the rest of the roster comes in through as well. Annabelle now going to be taken out, taken down. As Rosemary tries to trade in still, trying to brawl it out against the Assassin, but it won't be enough. R procs the Zaman Force, and Vivian stays on top of him. She can't really go around, but the penalty zone can't really lock her in with the Purify, but it doesn't matter. The damage is too much, and that's one extra turret shot for Vivian, and she still makes it out of that engagement alive, though. That was a valiant effort, though, from Ecstatic on the Valentina with the IMU Tyrant's Rage Revenge, right? She nearly was able to kind of turn things around and get a favorable trade on her end. But unfortunately, Indonesia were just a little bit too slick with it and were able to get out of that position, especially that happened under the turret. So that damage taken was, you know, increasing over and over, but a two for one in the top side. And that's going to be Fumi Echo taken out right before this neutral objective take. This is a proper setup now for Malaysia. Ooh, in comes Vivian though, jumping in towards Annabelle. These are very beefy members. Vivian can go for a steal here, but look out for Bea. Oh man, unfortunately, the retribution was just not close enough for such a small margin of error. And now Vivian pays the price. But look at the response immediately. Vivian going in for the steal. Unfortunately, the buff will not be available. Wow, Malaysia, man, they're keeping up with this. 
Yeah, she was a little bit too early with her retribution earlier on, and so there was a sliver of HP that eventually Malaysia could have capitalized over, but here's a dive. 1d3 for our Temples of Blades, though, will allow Rival to actually kite back away from the damage. The tower falls, but so will Rival, though. Malaysia with the response. No global presence, no problem. Annabelle just rolls in to the rescue. One for one trade now. Vival for R. Technically, it's kind of good for Indonesia to try and stop the snowballing from the Harith, but it looks like the Luo Yi, Sini here, gonna get caught really low, forcing a recall as Malaysia look to look for more opportunities on the map. It looks like this mid side turret is something that they've been keeping an eye on so far. But let's take a little bit of a skip back to the junglers, right? Vival level 9 right now. But Rosemary has also reached that same level. Wait a second, Vivian! Getting pounded on right now with the bouncing ball to try and survive. It won't be enough though. Malaysia, man. They identified the chance. Oh, Sidi even taking the appraiser's wrath. Slain by Rosemary. Malaysia now immediately making plays across the map, but look at Shell trying to equalize 1v1 against R. The Zaman Force is used up, but it won't be enough. Shell backs away from it, and still Malaysia taking the better trades all across the board. That yeah. mobility, the crowd control, is allowing them so much more opportunities. 2 for 0 trade, and it looks like Vival is going to go on to Bea here, looking to defend this turret. She successfully Ooh. does that, and this is a 1v1. Arashi, Temps of Blades have been utilized as well. Oh, what? the outplay though! Bea says no, I'd win! Vival gets immediately nuked out. That is just not the way that was supposed to happen, man. The flicker out of the Tempest of Blades into the burst damage, and now Malaysia collapse, converge onto the turtle. No retribution for Indonesia. It won't be available. And even on the bottom side, Fumi Echo locked in a duel, locked in a 1v1 as Rosemary goes for some sort of dive right here. But Shell already made the way down to the bottom. It's gonna be a 2v1 for Indonesia, but Ecstatic and Annabelle. Whoa, whoa, the whoa! Rescue. Look at that burst damage! That's gonna be Fumi Echo falling down soon as well. Two for nothing. And even the Todd on the top side, Malaysia! 3k gold lead now for Malaysia, ladies and gentlemen. As we enter the 8th minute of the game, what initially was Indonesia with the full control has now been taken otherwise. And we're going to take a look at that instant replay earlier on. In a 2 4 one that backup coming from Malaysia was superb. And then top it off with the burst damage coming through from Bea on the quantum charge, by the way, has been insane. Right, 402 at the moment. I'm actually curious to see the itemization of this Paquito as Vivian Ooh. misses. That's the current base tavern to revenge combo. It won't really work out. Bea though, going aggressively under the turret. Vival will try her best to try and secure, but will it be a repeat? Bea survives the in engagement. And Indonesia are forced to just take the loss as Malaysia continues with their domination. What is going on here? What is going on, right? This is a team that has not dropped a single game in their previous tournament. And that was quite recent. That was only like a few weeks ago, right? Not even the Philippines could actually go for the counter towards this team. Imagine not dropping a single game. And here it is, Malaysia taking complete control. Gonna open it up and take in that turret. That burst of damage coming through. Luckily, Fumi is still gonna be able to defend that. But look at Rosemary. Ooh, Vivian getting jumped on right here, but the damage coming in from Sini is definitely something not to be trifled with. Penalty zone from Fumieko to try and turn the tides around, but Vival does not land the Tempest of Blades onto anyone. And here comes Bea, the raid boss with her eyes on Shell, won't be able to find it just yet. As once again, Malaysia losing only the Roamer for Roamer, not taking any disadvantageous trades so far. 5k gold lead from Malaysia and counting. Rosemary despite the lead, is still on the same level as Vival. So Vival has still been keeping up in the jungle, in the way that she's been able to rotate around the map. She's actually picked up the Malefic Roar as well, in the hopes to deal some more damage onto the members of Malaysia, because so far, she's been the one that's been bursted out every time she goes in, either with the Tempest of Blades or the King's Poise. There's no chance for her with the damage that she's been you know, failing to give out. But here it is. Tempest of Blades and everything in the board. Arashi! Bea is just focused down. Tempest of Blades not really down yet, but here it comes. Rival going in, but it doesn't matter. 
She's gonna be forced to get away from the engagement zone. Bea still surviving despite the penalty zone and the Tyrant's Rage. Tyrant's Revenge combo used onto her. This is some unreal stuff. And in the middle, Fumi Echo taking damage from R, but it might be a bit too much that she can handle. It's gonna be Sydney picking up the kill. The Lord is still up, and now Indonesia has the man advantage. Shell trying to get the mid turret, sneaking it out, knowing that there is a moment of respite in the middle of the fight. But look at this, Malaysia immediately contests grounds once more. And now it looks like Indonesia are utilizing the mobility in the lane to go in for the far lane, right? To push into the car lane. And Bea is going to be too slow to capsize like both of them. But meanwhile, what? Annabelle taken out. Bea now trying her best to try and turn this around, but she is just a bit too low. Forced out, still alive though. Vivian finally avoids the Prince's Wrath. This is a double kill for Fumi Echo. And Indonesia will take it. What happened right there? It's like a switch was just flipped, and now Indonesia are just getting the better of Malaysia in this fight, but they are all below half HP except for R. Can they go for it? Will they risk a steal? Vivian kills it up, goes for the play, but no! Malaysia takes it away! Indonesia, though, tries to get retribution for that. Rosemary will fall, R will fall as well, but the Lord falls into the hands of Malaysia. The retribution fails again for Vival here, ladies and gentlemen, as it is three members taken off the board in favor of Indonesia, but they had to lose control over that Lord. We're gonna take a look at a quick replay earlier on. We do, we do see that Vivian was charging, had an eye over, but again, right, the Fredra being able to collapse it over with her ultimate was eventually able to get in that retribution with the combo in, with the damage and Malaysia was able to get the better out of it. Meanwhile, Shell caught in a bad position here. Annabelle gonna be able to give her a little bit of CC there. There is backup coming from Ecstatic, but they're not gonna commit over onto it. I guess that's the main difference, right? Claude pre and after, she, uh, she gets her power spike. Because oh, before nice. that team fight, before Shell was able to deal out the damage and become the main factor in these team fights, she was able to pick up that golden staff. And now she's reached that point. We're gonna see the next item later on. Should be the DHS. But again, right? Shell has been so dependable in a position where Malaysia has been picking up the scraps from Indonesia. Oh, man, we're taking a ton of damage right here, though. Rosemary positioning aggressively and R a chance to try and do something but these are turrets falling down all across the map for malaysia as it's supposed to but later on annabelle is going to be stuck in a tough situation because her mobility tool is also the engaged tool and they jump out to bea though that's going to be an amazing pickoff rosemary tries to turn this around but shell is left in the back avoiding the vengeance damage from annabelle is hiding back and they're still under the turret though this is a chance for vivian to go in for the chase vivian Lands the Tyrant's Rage, Tyrant's Revenge combo, but Vival has a chance to chase it down. There's gonna be a diversion for Sini, but she won't be able to spot anyone just yet. Ooh, she's caught really low. She needs to be careful here. But it looks like there is backup coming in from Sini as well as Vival in order for Rosemary to be zoned away. And it looks like that is going to be a purple buff stolen for Indonesia away from Rosemary. And that's also a turret taken in. The Blazing Duet earlier on was also quite spectacular as we take a look into the item. So she actually already has the Corrosion Scythe, DHS, as well as a Malefic Roar. So that is where the damage is coming from. And Malaysia finally, up until this point, are going to start struggling, right? It looks like the Paquito has a little bit of a, you know, hybrid uh, itemization, Arashi, mm -hmm. with the Dominance Ice. We have the Hunter Strike, we have the War Axe, but also the Oracle. That's for more healing with the Festival of Blood and getting the extra shielding as well if she goes for that combo. Vivian now walking into Bear once more. The Paquito at this point with Indonesia catching up in gold, actually taking the gold lead outright. She's just a bit too vulnerable because she's not a pure tank. So Bear needs to be a bit more careful because she is a lot more punishable now. As the diversion is prepared, you're going to push the bottom side and diver diversion out. That seems to be the idea here for the side of Indonesia, but Annabelle spots it. it. Looks like they're looking for a catch, right? Or even a bait. Just for some information as to the whereabouts of Team Malaysia. Rosemary at level 15, Vival at level 15 as well, so it's back to a 50-50. Rosemary, for the most part, have been able to get the retributions over Vival. So we'll see if that's something that will happen once again. Will that be the same story once again? Or will Indonesia find a way to just really dislocate Rosemary in her tracks. 
Oh, that's gonna pick from Malaysia. The deleting shell immediately. Bea once again. Now she's going for the back line. But Tumi Echo, the slow lumbering Teresa, will be taken out. Rival is looking for a chance to try and do something here. Waiting in the wings. All she can do is cut the wave though. Without any damage sources left. Sini is the only one with Vivian. But that might be enough for Vivo to get some prio. She's trying to make plays happen, pushing the wave on the bottom side as well, but Malaysia make their move. It's a diversion to the top side of the Lord right here. It can catch the members of Malaysia off guard, but to what avail? There is a retribution available, but Malaysia are taking it slow. They don't have a lot of DPS tools available, but look at Annabelle uh -oh. actually spotting down. That's so risky. That's, that's so risky, and that's a big pick over to Annabelle, but... It was all just to buy time for Malaysia to pick up the Lord once again. Indonesia have failed in this regard. It looks like Viva wants to go into the commit. Ooh. Even the flicker play from Vivian actually misses. But you're going to be able to outmaneuver and outplay Indonesia yet again in the 16th minute of the game as Malaysia are coming back from that deficit. And at this point, these items are going to be ramping up as we are entering the 16th minute of the game, ladies and gentlemen. Will it be up to a will it be up to a very risky diversion play? Is that what we're going to look forward to? As it looks like Malaysia is going to be pushing down the tempo down under. All right, we're slowing down a bit more right here as Malaysia are just trying to set the waves up for that perfect push. For Indonesia, they do have spammable abilities in the hands of Sini, and they do have a late game claw to try and make plays around with. Look at that, Rosemary just taking a couple of basic attacks, already forced to back away, but the turret will fall. A duel happens on the top side, though Viva up against Bea, oh. who will come out on top this time. It turns out it's gonna be Bea. Once again, just a dominant force when it comes to the 1v1. No super potential available for the side of Indonesia. As they try and defend, they lose their topside base turret as well. And Malaysia seems like they're not quite satisfied. They want some more. They, they won't be able to. But they have shut down everything that Indonesia can throw at them. Very disciplined from Malaysia, right? They understand the limits of their push and they don't want to move forward. They don't want to give a fighting chance back to Indonesia. And now with the with both side lanes being pushed in, with both side lanes being exposed, either way, wherever this Lord is going to be spawning in the next few seconds of this game, Malaysia will be able to capitalize over it. Especially seeing now how much damage this Paquito still has as we take a look into the replay. So it looks like Indonesia were still able to clear in the bottom lane and Malaysia still were able to get a push. It looks like they're, they're utilizing the mid lane as a distraction. Meanwhile, are very quickly going to be able to make work of the turret and expose that for them to utilize in their next play. But look at the standoff coming through from both of these teams, right? Vivian in this bush, Sini over there as well. They're opening up... Finding information, I don't think they know that Rosemary's there, but they spot Bea, and it looks like they're going in for the kill here, Malaysia! Vivian cut off from the rest of the team, taking a lot of damage, the immortality is still available, but Indonesia won't be able to respond! They try their best to get their comrade out, but that will be 45 seconds on the death timer for Vivian, as the Lord spawns in 13. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. The moment that we've been waiting for, will Malaysia be able to close this oh. game here and now? But look at that! Healthy zone and Tempest of Blades, that's a lot of damage, but still, Vivo falls. But fortunately for the side of Indonesia, that's a mega kill picked up. And look at that blazing duet though. Shell trying her best to do out the damage. Rosemary gets out. The immortality is still available. Look at the diversion though, to try and zone R away and possibly catch, the, catch her off as well. Rosemary now alone, potentially cut off by the team. Sydney goes for it, spots her out. It's gonna be Rosemary taken down for sure. Running into the base of Indonesia, just trying to buy time as much as possible. This is valuable time not being used by Indonesia to go for the Lord. It's still paying off just well, but finally she Arashi, does Arashi, fall. Arashi, Arashi, Claude, Claude. In the mid lane shell, she doesn't even care about the Lord. She's going straight for the crystal. Indonesia with an amazing comeback. What was that? What? What are we seeing, ladies and gentlemen, for our first game in this series, in this final best of three, in the final semi-finals of that game? It was so close for it to become Malaysia, but Indonesia found that opportunity, that small window of opportunity, and they were able to capitalize 
over that. You were talking about how the Frederick was able to buy some time that Indonesia weren't utilizing. But as you were saying that, I was watching Shell literally mm-hmm. push through in the mid lane, go in straight into the base and eventually win that game for themselves. That was a huge setback to Malaysia's already winning formula to Malaysia's already winning condition that Indonesia were able to punish and look for a loophole over. So that's going to be, ladies and gentlemen, Indonesia picking up game number one, leading this best of three series and now at match point as we take a look at the highlights of what happened there if you guys just tuned in and perhaps, perhaps even missed it, right? Because you would think that with how it was going in the early game that Indonesia had a little bit more say, but at some point of the game, Malaysia just really came back. There were so many moments that, like this, right? Annabelle gonna be able to, you know, they were able to stop Shell in her tracks, prevent her from getting to her power spike quicker than ever. And then there were moments here again, Malaysia picking up the effort. There were so many 1v1s between Vival as well as Beya that eventually led to Beya winning it out. Ecstatic, great defense here, preventing them to go for that push into the gold, uh, gold shield turret. And initially, right, most of these objectives were actually taken by Malaysia. It was only the first neutral objective that Vival was able to take. And afterwards, it's just Malaysia finding the way to be just a bit more aggressive to find the right fights and the fact that the link threat was nullified so hard right here by Bea. I mean, shout out to Bea for making this game so difficult for Indonesia, man. 1v1s, it doesn't matter. 1v2 even, she can still hold her own. And when she is the one sent out for the split push, this was that amazing outplay, man. I thought, okay, this is about a done deal, but Bea, with the happy feet, with the deletion of Vival, that was what they were using, right? They were using Bea to do damage, but also to sustain and bait out all this aggression. And as a result, just come in and seal the deal. I really like the way Malaysia was able to actually make this, uh, this Baksha roam just look so much more viable. But unfortunately, towards the end, it just became a bit too chaotic. And for Indonesia, that kind of worked out in their favor. It, it was looking quite rough, especially moments like this, where you can see Vival just confused on what to do. But afterwards, they found some opportunities to try and come back. By the way, I just want to give an honorable mention, now that we're looking at the highlights for Ecstatic, right, on the Valentina. She's on a Valentina that is utilizing Purify, Arashi. So for playmaking, it's not that easy, especially without the Flicker because she opted for the Purify, but there are so many moments that she's able to make these plays with the Tyrant's Rage Revenge combination without the Flicker. So that, that was something that, you know, hands down, high, high mechanics as well from this Valentina. Definitely, man. That was a big problem as well, adding to the layers of crowd control. And it's not always the same crowd control every time coming out from Ecstatic. That is part of the issue. But this was that one big moment that was so good from Vivian, man. They're taking out uh, Bea before she can even cast any of her spells, any of her skills. And with Malaysia chasing down under the turret of Indonesia, that was a key moment in Indonesia spotting a chance to go in aggressively. And with the diversion, they can just catch up so, so well. But look at this, man. Even after that setback, Bea is undeterred, going in and deleting Shell. The Purify won't even matter. Definitely. Here she gets even Fumi as well. Just to, you know, cause more chaos and drama to already a very, very uh, offensive and aggressive Malaysia. And they were able to actually utilize that push to eventually pick up that top and as well as that bottom mid lane turret, uh, the, the base turret as well. And yet, Indonesia, that was fine for them, right? They still were able to find that opportunity later on that we should be seeing very, very soon. And I do believe that this is leading towards that team fight. I mean, it started off with Vivian getting picked off already. So we were thinking that there's no way this works out well for them. But that penalty zone into the, the funneling from Malaysia to be in a choke point for everything from Indonesia to be like put on top of them. And of course, this blazing duet play 1v2. That's a late game claw, ladies and gentlemen. Shell definitely did a number onto them. And with the diversion play, 
We didn't see too many crazy moments, but when it happens, it was just so impactful. They were able to stop Rosemary from going back. I don't even think that Solo, she can actually stop this push for the end, but Shell got it done with that Claude. And despite everything, the kills are 20-20, man. This was that close of a game. Exactly. It could have gone either way. It was pushed to the very end in 19 minutes. One of our longest games so far that we've seen today here in the MLBB women's scene. And that's exactly the kind of show and the kind of performance that we expect from both of these teams. Malaysia, man. Even though Indonesia are at match point, we can expect Malaysia to fight even harder for game number two. And perhaps we're going to see a similar story, right? Uh, in game number one, in our match number one of the playoffs, we saw that initially it was Philippines being able to pick up that first game, but then Cambodia come back with a clean sweep, right? With a with a reverse sweep, rather. So that same story can be done by Malaysia. So it's not to say that Indonesia will take this right now. There's definitely a big possibility that Malaysia can go for the upset as well and go for that underdog story, go against uh, this team, this team that hasn't dropped a single tournament so far. It's a very dominant team showing again why that is absolutely the case, right? The recovery, the adjustments mid-game. It's so crazy that the game was that close that it all comes down to just a few select moments. If that went uh, one way or the other, they could have really decided the game. Uh, I have to... Man, even if you ask me who is my MVP, I think it has to be either Cine or Shell. Considering how Viva was really shut down completely, I think Shell definitely takes the cake there for MVP. Ooh, I think a point is to be made for Cine. So mm -hmm. let's see... Let's see who is going to be getting this MVP, ladies and gentlemen, for our first game in this best of three series. Will it be Shell? Will it be Cine? Or will it be Vivian? Maybe Viva? Let's We're going to see in just a few moments. I, I love the suspense, man. And it's Cine. The wow, player of the match. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm on a roll. Is this like a 4 0, Arashi? I don't know. How do you feel about this? I mean, you're the analyst. <laughs> you know, it is what it is, right? At the end of the day, we're just human. You know, we're just we're just normal human beings. So, hey, I mean, <laughs> you're definitely on a roll right here. You are the real brains behind the entire <laughs> Indonesian desk operation, man. Like everyone now is just waking up to your brilliance. You know, I, I have a I have a big forehead already, Rashi. You know, might as well be <laughs> smart, right? It, I think it's a bad position to have a big forehead and you know have. The lack of brains so i'm gonna take this one thank you i'm gonna use that to you know pat myself in the back but again right there's mm -hmm. just so many moments that sini was able to create on a hero like luo yi that was nerfed by the way right the mm -hmm. the cooldown on her diversion was increased to one minute plus plus before like uh, cooldown reduction items but it's approximately a one minute gap that you will have to capitalize over and make it effective right because it's not as spammable as mm. it was before there's no room for error there's no room for mistakes so the fact that she's able to utilize a luo yi that kind of has fallen off after that readjustment towards her diversion and make it work and still create those amazing plays goes to show the level that Cine has right i think that final moment as the you know the freden was you know fighting for his life uh in the in the you know, side part of the map earlier on. Mm -hmm. The fact that she was able to take down that second layer. I, I don't remember who it was, but that I love that play. I think I think Arashi can explain it better than me. But you know you know the moment I'm talking about, right? The the final sequence? Yes, the final sequence. Yeah, Rosemary was just chased down again and again. Cine, uh along with Vivian. I mean everyone everyone that was available was just chasing her down just to ensure that well first of all she, they can get the death timers rolling but also to ensure that she can't go back and try and clear the wave. Like I said though, with how much power Shell has in the late game Claude, I'm not convinced that she, that Rosemary can do much to try and stop it, but there's always a possibility, right? But man, late game, that was just uh, so devastating. That final fight, I, I really felt like for the most part, a lot of those fights were done in a very sporadic fashion and that's by design uh, from Malaysia. Right? They know that there's a blazing duet. They know that there is going to be a dispersion rotation 
you know, spam coming in from Cine on the low G. So they're trying to avoid that happening. And whenever they go for a play, it's always a big burst of action and then slow again. And that's why Bea just looks to be looks so much more flashy than everyone else. Because she was one of the key members that can do so. But in that fight, they already got a pickoff on Vivian. But they got baited, man. They really thought that, oh, we can get some more. We can get a guaranteed Lord or even an N. But they were in that three-way choke point. They yeah. got hit by the, the the penalty zone, the Tempest of Blades, and with Cine just spamming everything, un, unfazed, un, undisturbed by anyone trying to jump at her. That was the end of the story. That's like best case scenario for Luo Yi, right? You have everyone right. clumped up as one, and then your your passive just keeps on procking, and that mm -hmm. burst over and over and over and over and over again was, you know, ima imagine being caught in that right penalty zone, and then you get the, like the dispersions coming through with the passive with the yin and yangs. It's just like, okay, I'm stuck, because like one <laughs> of the main things about the passive is not only the damage but. Also, the, the CC that kind of locks you in place, right? That displacement mm -hmm. that becomes an issue that if you don't have Purify or something along those lines, it's so difficult for you to get out because it's so sticky. It's like, yeah, right. I'm stuck here. Yeah, I, I, I'm just going to die here. There's, there's absolutely nothing I can do. Because, I mean, it, it kind of pulls you back too, right? It's, so yeah. it's a bit of stun, but also a bit of displacement. And especially when you're panicking, right? Especially when you're in that situation where like, hang on a minute, we're in danger, <laughs> right? The, the combos are coming, you're trying to move and then you kind of you kind of slid back and forth, left and right yeah. by that uh, by the duality, the passive of Lo Yi. And what can you do, man? And it's great for, honestly, I think it's great that Malaysia were able to actually control for that long. Like I said, I love the Baksha Rome. I've been saying it has potential for quite a bit, uh, but even for Indonesia, it's great that they were able to hold off for that long. Because usually for uh, if you're up against a Malaysian team and they get rolling, they go hard, man. They don't back down at all. So being able to save the angry Malaysians off in the first place is already <laughs> a bit of an achievement. Okay, let's see how this goes, is going to pan down as we are, ladies and gentlemen, back to match point for Indonesia as we enter the drafting phase for game number two. Chip! Actually, the choice of ban here from Malaysia, if they both have swapped sides. Ling also going to be banned out. We have the Harith and the Angela. So earlier on, we didn't even see the Roger being picked up at all, right? The Roger wasn't even placed in the jungle. It also wasn't flexed in into the gold lane. They completely ignored it. I think Angela it has to be a priority ban here. But the question is, what, what do they think about the Luo Yi, right? Indonesia mm. definitely saw the value of the Luo Yi. So will they leave that to be opened up for, of course, Malaysia to pick up for themselves now that the Yu Zong has been banned? So Malaysia is putting Indonesia in quite a tough position and they go for the Vexana so they don't take the bait and they're going to go and decide to go for a contest instead. We have Roger, Matilda and um, Roger, Matilda and the Luo Yi that's still opened up right now. I feel like the Luo Yi really would benefit the style that Malaysia is going for. Like we saw that they were abusing that shield unity again and again. And so if they can move more people faster than before, there's a chance they can put Indonesia in the same spot, the same seat, you know? But they go for the Roger here, a bit of flex, a bit of prio for the jungle and the gold lane. For Indonesia, after banning away the Vexana here, they really respect that the, again, the team fighting, the cut control layering from the side of Malaysia. So... If you talk about crowd control, the, the grog comes to mind, but I don't think they'll pick it up this early. Uh, I'm a big fan of the X-Bor considering how annoying it is, but again, probably a bit too early for that. It's going to be the Minotaur along with the Moskov though, so the global presence is still very much in the hands of Indonesia. It's a power pick. So these two picks are a power pick for Indonesia, right? Shell mm -hmm. on the Moskov has been insane. You saw her mechanics on the Claude, wait till you see her mechanics oh, yeah. on the Moskov, right? You can imagine. And Minotaur is also a signature pick for Vivian. I think one of the glaring things that I saw from game number one uh, was kind of from Vivian, right? We didn't really see her impact on the Kufra. There were a lot of times where she missed her Tyrant's Rage and Revenge and her True. Flicker combos. 
So maybe she's not as comfortable on the Kufra, seeing as the Kufra just made his way back into the patch. But something like the Grok was actually something that I expected. It's also a power pick for her. But the Minotaur is also something that they found a lot of success with. Especially now they're going against a hero like the hmm. Claude Arashi. So this is, should be a Roger in the jungle alongside the Kufra now being picked up by Malaysia. Well, the Kufra has traded hands for now, so... All things considered, I feel like for Indonesia, they're going to require some other beefy member to take the initial engage so that Vivian can actually have space to go in for the counter. Baksha immediately shows up, and I think it's no longer a flexible option. So with that, though, they've already showed their cards. Malaysia with a lot more damage. Now Indonesia are the ones who are turning it around. Now, now they are the ones with the DPS, with the solid tanky frontliners so uh, we'll have to see how this really plays out they ban away the Terizla as well it's like they want to try and force Malaysia to to engage them in a battle of tankiness and they're planning on coming out on top I also think that the Kufra being picked up here from Malaysia, they were anticipating that Indonesia would pick up yet another assassin in the jungle, right? Because the Nolan has been still left open. We do still have the Hayabusa on the board. And Indonesia, uh, Vival, she's very flexible with her picks. We've seen her on assassins. We've seen her on utility as well. So mm -hmm. I think that's kind of a, a, a foresight that they were looking for. We have the double U Zong being banned out. So the we can safely assume... That it's the CC in the bands that you yep. see, ladies and gentlemen. The one that's a little bit more red is the CC. And Ooh. there are so many EXP lane bands, by the way, right? Harlot, <laughs> Xborg, Terizla. What is left to play in the EXP lane? I guess Ruby, Benedetta, and Paquito are the options now. I was about to raise that point that Paquito, that was just so devastating, so useful for Malaysia. Now, most likely, it falls into the hands of Indonesia if they want it, but at the same time, they're almost forced to pick it because if they let it go here and let Bea have it again, now with the Roger, with the Kufra, that whole combo looks like it makes a bit more sense. So for Indo, will they bite on that or will they invite Bea to just go back to that Paquito and go for something different here? Uranus, wow. Wait, what? I think I saw this back at SPS, Uranus mm -hmm. in the EXP line. I don't remember how that match ended up, whether or not the Uranus won in that lane. But what is the idea of the Uranus here? Are they anticipating that the Malaysians will pick up the Paquito in that EXP lane? Is, is that the kind of the idea that the Uranus has here in the EXP lane? It could be it. It's also the fact that right now, the Roger generally doesn't do DPS, and the Claude, each attack kind of like, it's, it's a, tri a triple shot. So it kind of uh, stacks your passive a lot faster too. But it's matched by a, a Khalid in the EXP lane. So burst to try and take out the Uranus before uh, the, the friends or the, the passive can start ticking. But with the Yeev for the, for the control, this is a tanky team that can be slowed down a lot. But with the Kadira in the picture, now it's a bit more tricky. You can expect purifiers coming in from the side of Malaysia. But also the same thing can also be said for Indonesia, right? I mean, technically Malaysia also has a lot of catch and I personally love the Yeeve pick here because we have so many heroes that are forced to keep a short range when they go mm. in for these team fights, right? You have the Uranus, melee hero, Baxia, melee hero, we have the Minotaur, and we have the uh, Moskov that is, okay, he is an MM and he does have a basic attack and there is range, but it's a relatively short range, right? Very similar to like the carry, who whose range is actually quite small and can be capitalized by the real world manipulation range from the Yeev. So very interesting here with the Yeev pick coming through, but what do you think about this Kadita? What's the idea with the Kadita here? It's a, a great tool to follow up on stuff. There is still a very possible shield unity into Breath of the Ocean combo, right? To go for those pickoffs. You can use it as a deterrent. You can use it as, a, as an engage tool, obviously. And the presence of an assassin would be nice in general, especially against a Claude, against a Yeev as well. There are targets available right here but they can't really have it in the jungle. So now they go for an assassin in the mid lane. And I think it's difficult, right? It's never easy to run with an assassin in the mid lane. There's just layers of issues you have to try and deal with. But 
our very own Indonesian uh, sons likes to pull it off very often. So if Sini can mimic that kind of performance, there's a chance that even without the knockup, because R is going for the purify, she can kind of just zone out by using the rough waves, and that will just zone R long enough. Because as much as Moscow is short range, the club ain't much better either. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Match Point. In the semi-finals, our second semi-finals of the day, we are at match point with Indonesia one game away of securing that final ticket, that second and final ticket to Riyadh, that second and final ticket to WEC as Malaysia look to go for a reverse sweep against their fellow uh, uh, Langar, right? Fellow Indonesians here as well. But we'll see already a charge from Annabelle earlier on here, Arashi, but they will still be able to get out alive. And I think one of the interesting things here for me is the fact that Shell, as we're talking about her, we're going to have a look at how she's been doing in her lane, is actually opts to go for uh, that spell instead of going for something inspire. a little more safe like the Purify. She goes for Inspire instead, but meanwhile in the bottom lane... Ooh, a lot of damage. That's going to be the first blood by Rosemary. Fumi Echo overestimating how tanky she can be right there. Gets absolutely punished. Yes, the Uranus has tankiness, but you have to wait a bit longer. But Vival trying to even out the score in the middle right here. Going to Ecstatic, but there's not enough damage. No level 4 just yet. Malaysia take the first tempo play. And they are not stopping, man. They're going straight into the jungle. They're prepping for a trap, but look at that. Ooh, Sini. I bet you taken out still. It's going to be early value for Malaysia, but can Indonesia equalize? Raging Sandstorm onto two. It won't be enough though as Rosemary gets taken out, gets walked on by Fumi Echo on the Uranus. Yeah, they traded completely back here. Indonesia being able to take down Rosemary as well as Bea, and they should have the man advantage when it comes down to this Lord setup. However, Vival, despite the success that she was able to obtain earlier on, is forcing to go for a recall as Annabelle, once again with the charge, actually goes in for the cancel, but there is still that kill pressure that Bayo offers, whether it be on the Paquito, whether it be on the Khalid, that Indonesia still need to be aware of. And this is a very active Khalid, by the way, Arashi. Earlier on, was able to, you know, clear in the mid side as well. And now, look at what she's able to do here. Look at the Minion Fury as a response, though. Annabelle caught out alone. Cindy tries to follow up on it, but the Raging Sandstorm catches too. Annabelle pushes Vival back in, but Fumi Echo already in the back, just tanking out the damage. But look at Bea, a pincer maneuver right here, confusing Indonesia that wants to play front to back. But they are on pace. They have to sustain to try and play this long game. The Vivian, though, getting caught out right here. Annabelle, can she steal the deal? It won't be enough, but look at Shell coming in with the Spear of Destruction onto Ecstatic. It will be the end for her. As we can see, Annabelle is waiting for a chance, trying to get out of it, stuck in the side of Indonesia. Vival, though, eventually will try and ignore her to go for the neutral objective. This is a very chaotic sequence of events, but look at whoa, the whoa, play! Whoa, whoa. The rough waves onto Rosemary won't be enough, as Bea is still just lingering around, like you said, Eterna, playing it active, trying to make an impact, but in the end, Indonesia gets the better of Malaysia, and Shell makes her way back up top as the team secures the turtle. What were we watching like for the past like one minute, one to two minutes? That was so chaotic on all fronts, right? Rosemary being dived in by the Kadida in the back line, uh, forcing a recall, seeing as how low she was, but Sydney was also caught very low in terms of mana, so she couldn't really execute that as properly as she should have. But then at the end of the day, with all the events that came through, it looks like Indonesia is still going to be able to pick up that objective, right? Which is something that they can hold on to. But for the most part, Malaysia is still equal when it comes down to the economy, right? So despite the kills for Indonesia, despite the neutral objective takes from Indonesia, Malaysia has a 100k gold lead, Rashi. Yeah, but Indonesia goes to try and extend that gold lead. It's gonna be Annabelle deleted immediately by the rough waves. That's the Baksha kadira combo. And Indonesia, they're not looking like it, but they got pressure around the map. Malaysia can definitely be a real threat if they group up together. But for Indonesia, they have pressure to play around with. Fumi Eko, once again, tries to be an absolute nuisance. Uses the Purify already, though. Getting hunted down, getting hit by the Raging Sandstorm, but it won't be enough for now. The slows, though, will keep her in place long enough for Malaysia to finally take her down. 
enough burst for her to be taken down. But meanwhile, Shell also not staying idle as she is going to be able to push in this turret in the top lane. But actually, no minions. They're, they they were able to successfully clear that. Shell actually forced in a recall there, forced in to you know, back away from that objective, even with the help of Vivian as well. So smart move by R to stand behind the turret so that whenever Shell was going for the turret damage, she has to tank oh. the turret and back away. But look at that play on the top side, though Shell popping the Inspire, trying to duel it out 1v2, though she comes out on top. As Indonesia make a play for the turtle, the Spear of Destruction is still very much available as Fumieko just walks off around, zoning away the members of Malaysia and finding information. Seems like she Malaysia been... will be able to match though, and they'll be able to leave that turtle to Indonesia. Yeah, she has been such an exceptional player, Arashi. Like, Shell, despite everything that's going on with Indonesia, you can always count on her to be able to win it in that mid and carry towards the late game. Because, man, time and time again, which, whatever hero that she's being placed on, she does exactly this. Now they're going to be able to push in once again. Ooh. You do see Annabelle forcing a recall, but a charge, a re-engage. Minu and Fury, though, gets Annabelle stuck. And look at the rough waves. Use onto the roamer only, though. But Sini is hitting back and forth, dealing out the damage. It won't be enough. Vival and Sini petrified being used. Immediately purified by R, but Fumi Echo is on the scene. The Raging Sandstorm, though, catches too. Gets the double. That's gonna be Bea once again making the place happen for her team. And Fumi Echo is alone right now. Four members down for Indonesia. And that's just it. That's just Malaysia at their finest. A huge standout here as Oh Shell goes in with the Spear of Misery. And secures the kill immediately, the global play, Indonesia respawning and immediately striking back. What is going on? The speed of what the is going on? Exactly, oh right? And all the while, Rosemary going to be very quick on her feet as well, picking up that turret in that top side that she was able to get traded back in with the kills that Shell was inevitably able to pick up. 2-1-1 so far for Shell, but... Man, Bea, whether it be on the Paquito, on the Khalid, she's doing work with the with the executions into the back line that Malaysia have been able to work over and work on top of those big plays by Bea. It's a big, big threat that Indonesia really need to try and you know solve as we take a look at that replay. I guess with a minion fury, but like we said, Indonesia used a bunch of their spells already on the frontliners and they lost Shell, right? If Shell was around, maybe this fight would have gone differently. And Fumiko, once she arrives, everyone respects the presence and backs away. But Bea, with the killer instinct, exceptional stuff, man, finds a chance to go in the back line. But now Indonesia, they're the ones still orchestrating a play right here. And the goal on Annabelle. And Rosemary is dishing out more damage than Vivel can hope to try and do. And look at the slows, man. This is allowing them to go for a full one pick off. They commit onto it with the Ruin Manipulation as well. But the Minion and Fury will buy enough time. Look at the, the Blazing Duet from R to try and solve this problem, but it won't be enough. That's gonna be the threat destruction, though. It's gonna be Shell once again going in the back line, getting low, but still surviving. And Indonesia get full complete control, but Rosemary is just scratching away. Fumiko ignore uh -oh. in favor of Sini and Shell, but Rosemary will not be able to do so. Oh, what? Coming in. Unfortunately for her, she gets taken out. It's gonna be a dive still from Fumiko though to try and get ecstatic, but it will actually work out for her. A double kill as Annabelle is just forced to watch her comrade taken down. What a layer of events! That occurred, Ooh. ladies and gentlemen, in that final showdown. Oh my lord, right? I mean, Rosemary, I don't know if it was a mistake or not, but she accidentally used her skill onto Fumi Echo when she could have gone for the kill onto Sini instead. And I don't think that Rosemary would have been caught that low if she was able to get that kill down, right? And then Shell came in was able to capitalize over those movements and eventually pick up that turret in that mid side. The chain of events that happened earlier, that was so unfortunate. And Bea, once again, one, being one of the main damage dealers, picking up the Malefic War, one of the anchors of damage for her team, was unable to find a proper moment to go in for the Flicker Raging Standstorm. But look at this, Ooh. Annabelle, with the re-engage, very aggressive, actually gonna be able to bait in Sini right before they go in for the Lord take. 
a little bit of rough waves used up already. But look at the far side, Fumi Echo, knowing that she's so tanky and it requires multiple members from the side of Malaysia to try and take her down. He just goes in for the push and now there's a chance that Indonesia can get a fight without Bea diving into the back. And look at Vivian already on the Antique Kiras. She's gonna put herself between the opposing team and the Lord and completely deny it. It's gonna be a Lord picked up for Indonesia and look at the flank from Fumi Echo. It won't be decisively starting any oh! kind of fight, but from Annabelle. Immediately countered by Vivian with a knockup, and the rough wave zone everyone else away. Oh, already sends them to five, though, right there. Once again, would be enough as Shell is still left around. And finally, she gets taken out by the united effort of R and Rosemary. That's gonna be a win for Malaysia, despite Indonesia getting the Lord. Bea has been insane! Have you ever seen that in your life? Five member Raging Sandstorm Flicker combo and Indonesia nearly gets wiped out in the 11th minute of the game. Man, I am so hyped. We have to take a look at that again, right? Because that was a huge, huge play. We do see that most of the members here are oh, Annabelle with that beautiful Tyrant's Rage and Revenge coming through. But look at the Ocean Odyssey, the Ocean Waves coming through. But that Raging Standstorm Flicker onto 5 and the way that Malaysia were able to combo in with the uh, Blazing Duet and all the other sources of damage was just impeccable. That was a huge moment for Malaysia. And now Rosemary picks up the Malefic Roar to boot. We are caught in a precarious position if Indonesia look to close this 2-0 to zero because for sure Annabelle, Bea, they mean business and they've been able to look for so many opportunities to turn what initially was a dominant game and here she goes again! So, yeah, but Sydney goes for the counter engage onto Rosemary though. The real manipulation will zone the members of Indonesia away, but it won't be enough for now. Shell goes for the Sphere of Destruction, not taking it just yet as her teammates chase down slowly but surely ecstatic unable to escape they finally won and found a winning a winning engagement right here as Vival will be able to just chase R down slowly but surely and Indonesia regroup immediately they're going for a push they know they have two death timers already rolling can they go for some kind of end engagement going for the turrets most likely but they have to be careful the fact that Shell does not have the purify makes it so difficult for her to stay in the front and output that damage steadily. They get a base turret for their efforts, but they have to be careful. Whenever they're able to get any kind of lead from Malaysia, it has always been traded back. So they are definitely on their toes for that. A ticket to Riyadh hangs in the balance here, Arashi, as we are entering the 13th minute of the game. There have been so many moments that both of these teams have been able to find them for themselves and for their own team. And just one mistake can really lead to their demise here, especially for Malaysia, who are now looking at Indonesia that are at match point. We see that Shell picks up the orange buff right now. If we take a look at both of the junglers, Rosemary is actually a level ahead. So when it comes down to this retribution contest, when oh. it comes down to the retribution battle, it looks like Malaysia should have a little bit more to work with, a little bit more of an advantage, especially with the tools that have been utilized. But now we get to kind of slow things down finally to break down what has been happening for the past 14 minutes of this game, Arashi. Wow. <laughs> that was 14 minutes? Wow. That was 14 minutes. It felt like it was longer, right? Oh, man. It's nonstop. It's on site for both these teams, man. Whoever they see, they just immediately pile on. That five-man Raging Sandstorm just caught me completely off guard, dude. I was, I was so struck by it. I couldn't even <laughs> like, respond properly. Man, Malaysia just... Going toe to toe against Indonesia, <laughs> but it really feels like it's just a, a brute force fight, right? It's just mechanics on top of mechanics to see who reigns supreme. And for now, with the Lord already in the picture, it's gonna be more of a macro setup with Fumi Echo on the on the uh, Uranus pushing away. But the fact that Shell, the fact that Indonesia has a three tank like two damage dealer uh, two damage dealer composition. And the fact that Shell is going with the Inspire instead of the Purify makes this game just so risky for Indonesia. Because we saw earlier, despite the fact that there is backup, there is coverage coming in from Vivian on the Minotaur, if the Roger and the, the Claude can get to the Moskov, Shell can still get taken out. 
So would you call it overconfidence maybe going in for the Inspire instead? Because let's say that Raging Sandstorm hit. Shell, if she had the Purify, she would have been able to outmaneuver that and maybe turn that entire team fight completely around. But the fact that she's opted to go for this, it's going to be very risky as Annabelle goes in for another pit here. Engage into Vivian, the Minotaur, not the ideal target. Rivel though, getting chunked out, taken away from the fight. Malaysia pick up the Lord, but look at the pinch coming in. Shell comes through, but the win of nature from R will save her life. They're chasing down to Bea and Ecstatic, and Fumieko has the movement speed to try and run them down with the slows as well. But already stands someone to one person, turns it around. Fumieko falls, and the Lord comes through. Indonesia forced to back away. Oh no, no, no. The chase coming through from Indonesia, it wasn't successful with the movement speed and then the re-engage coming in from Bea with the raging standstorm onto Fumi. That was just so brilliant and now they're gonna have to buy some time, right? 20 seconds for Fumi to spawn and now they are at a man disadvantage with this, you know, enhanced lord stepping in into the bottom lane. These turrets are gonna fall down like flies and yet again that ticket to Riyadh, that final slot to Riyadh at WEC hangs to the balance with R picking up the Malefic Roar. This is shaping to be a very difficult position for Indonesia. Shell will be trying to clear the Lord out immediately though. Surprisingly, no towers fall just yet. It's gonna be a great defense from the side of Indonesia. But for Malaysia, whenever they're in this kind of scenario, they just have so much more of an advantage due to Ecstatic just being on the Eve. And we know that Indonesia are planning on banking on sustainability. I mean, Sini has sustainability. The Minotaur in, on Vivian has sustainability. Fumi Echo and Shell still. Even with the Inspire, that technically is an extra bit of sustain on hit uh, with that battle spell. But against the glowing one that's being built immediately by Ecstatic, it's a whole different story, man. It's just a lot of these regeneration tools cut down from Indonesia. Which is why they have to really be smart when they weave in and weave out of these team fights, right? They need to figure out a way to kind of bait out those resources, bait out the real world manipulation from Ecstatic. Oh. Let's wait a second. Viva goes in for a collision, but that's the whole team available to back her up. The Breath of the Ocean will zone everyone away, but that's the Turtles' presence already used up. Fumi Echo has been pushing the wave, but as of right now, she's just not having enough impact when it comes to that macro game. She can't push fast enough and she can't rotate fast enough either. Yeah, it's not as easy. It's not as straightforward now that we're entering the late game. Ladies and gentlemen, 17 minutes between both of these teams. Very equal when it comes down to it. At this point, the gold lead that Malaysia has, a 3k gold lead, will start to, you know, the, the, the importance of it will start to sliver away. And now it comes down to the mind games, right? Who will be smarter when it comes down to these Lord takes? Because naturally, Indonesia, I don't think they want to go for a full 5v5. Maybe they look for a pick off instead. Maybe they look in for a pick over. But the fact that Fumi Echo is already posturing in that bush, and the fact that it looks like Malaysia want to go in for the collapse, it's not looking good. Let's see how they unfold and how they play this out. Well, finally, Fumika shows herself on the top side. And look at Shell. Ooh, Abyss Walker forwards there, landing a big stun. But in the midst of all that, there's just so much pressure here for every single base turret of Indonesia that's so low. Annabelle conceals, but Shell spots her down. Vivian, though, is in the same situation. But look at the play coming in from Sydney. The knock up there to try and break that immortality. Can they keep going here or not? The oh! play. There's revenge. The side start from Bea, though. The lead Shell. No gold in are available. Real manipulation being used as well for Malaysia to seal the deal right here. Rosemary chunking out damage, fishing out against the 10 of members, all the damage. And the chase comes through from Malaysia with the slows provided by Ecstatic. Seems to be the end of it. Fumi Echo chunk down, taken out. That's a maniac for Rosemary. It's a wiped out, ladies and gentlemen, for Malaysia in this 18th minute. And it looks like they're looking for a comeback. 18 seconds left for Shell to respawn into the game as Rosemary is going to go through with that DHS in addition towards in her kit to look for that straight push. And it looks like Malaysia will be able to force this to a game number three. But hold your horses. We're going to make you feel the, you know, the suspense. We are going to build up on the suspense as to how this game goes as you are forced to look at me and Arashi's beautiful face once again. Wow, again, right? Shell oh, using that Inspire. 
definitely not the best choice in this match. Annabelle, beautiful, beautiful flicker backwards, Tyrus Rage Revenge. And she was able to catch Shell off guard. And then the combination, the synergy that was already there for Malaysia. The fact that they were able to loop that in with the Raging Sandstorm 2 just was the nail in the coffin for Indonesia in that team fight. I bet now they're starting to wonder, like, why didn't I go Purify instead? It has to be in the back of their minds, but all things considered, I don't think that would have made a difference, right? The fact that Bea immediately came through and just landed that Raging Sandstorm, that was a ton of damage. And just like that, the fact that they have a, a protect, protect Shell VIP composition just kind of yeah. shuts down their chances of winning without that gold laner, man. That is so unfortunate. Wow. And we do have confirmation that the match uh, already ended with Malaysia winning it with that push after that, you know, wiped out that Maniac as well coming through for Malaysia. And once again, we're going to game number three. We wouldn't have it any other way here in the playoffs. There's no room for, you know, clean sweeps. We want it to go, you know, best of all, all the games. We want to see all the games. And, you know, even the system couldn't handle how much Malaysia were dominating in that final sequence, right? Even the system didn't allow you guys to witness the violence. So we're just gonna tell you, okay? We're gonna, you know, ease the pain a little bit. We're gonna give it to you a little bit softer, especially for all the Indonesian fans out there who are hoping to see a 2-0, to zero, especially with all the losses that we've been getting against this same region in the MLBB male scene. Are we looking at a comeback again? Are we looking at another reverse sweep story, that underdog story that we've been seeing here in the playoffs of ISF? Bro, that, that's, that's going to be very unexpected for sure. But on the bright side, apparently we have some highlights here. So hopefully that final sequence will be shown in the highlights as we get right into it. Let's see how both teams were just colliding, man. It's a relatively short game, all things considered, but it doesn't feel that way at all. Yeah, even from the start, right? I think we were like caught in that 14 minute mark and then we were like, wow, it's been 14 minutes. Everything just felt so fast, so much action that I think I think even you were a little bit drained with energy, right? Or actually with so much action happening. We thought that it was already a what 17 minute game at that 14 minute mark. But up until that very end, you know, Malaysia stayed persistent. They still were active, looking for opportunities to capitalize over. And finally, after all the initial, I would say, success from Indonesia with the with the objectives, with uh, the team fights, with the kills on the board, uh, they were able to finally get that stun in with Annabelle as well as Bea in the final sequence. But here again, we do see that Vival was caught quite low. R was able to capitalize over that. I think at the very end, finally R picked up the Malefic Roar. But that was that big play with the Raging Standstorm onto two people. And we thought that that was like the peak of, of Bea, right? And then she comes in later on. I hope we get to see the replay of that as well on a five-man oh, Raging sure. Standstorm. That was later on on the bottom side of the map, I think. But all throughout the game, man, it's just fights upon fights. I mean, even here, right? No info, no intel. Usually teams won't just go for it, but they're just trying to fight combo for combo. And look at that blazing duet here. It's immediately denied from the side of Indonesia. And that the play, man, the, the Spear of Destruction definitely is a, is a great tool to have. And Shell was using it to its utmost potential. But at that point, she gets a bit too low. This was the moment you're talking about, Eterna, where Rosemary maybe could have gotten the kill, but unfortunately for him, he gets, he's the one who gets knocked into the wall and just completely shut down as Fumi Echo dives in and continues the cycle, man. It just keeps going. Yeah. It, it was it was very... Oh, is this the moment? 10 minutes at all. It's not the moment yet, is it? Oh, it should be. Oh, I think it is. Actually, oh, there it is, right? Annabelle goes in with the Tyrant's Rage Revenge Flicker. And then here we go. Raging Stance Storm. Boom. Flicker. And able to get five members. And the, just the follow-up damage was so easy, right? For R with the Blazing Duet into the backside. There was nobody really able to kind of punish that uh, dive in with the Blazing Duet. And she was able to maximize on her damage output. It's definitely a lot of damage from Bea, man. 
And here, the, the patience for Shell to just wait on the Spear of Destruction. And Malaysia making the call to immediately rush down the Lord. Those are the things that we've been saying needs to be done, but a lot easier said than done. And this was the overchase. And unfortunately, it just didn't work out for Indonesia there. Losing Fumi Echo and then trying to defend. They were able to stave off the majority of the waves. But if you look at the tower HP, they're all so low. So Malaysia had a lot more pressure. And this was the play. Immediately, Shell just gets deleted. It doesn't matter how much healing, how much crowd control is used to try and protect if the damage is just too much. Eventually, Vivian and Viva were able to kind of equalize with a kill. But all things considered, with R on the cloth still alive, with Rosemary on the Roger just shooting and clawing members of Indonesia down. That, that is, there's just no way for them to come out on top there in a long, drawn-out fight. Okay, predictions for MVP now. I gotta go Rosemary. Okay, I think I'm gonna go Bea. Or Annabelle. Ooh, I can't decide. Everybody had their moment. Ooh, wait, wait, wait. So you're, you're, okay, you're gonna stick with Rosemary here? Uh, I think so. Man, yeah, she picked up the maniac. Oh god, this is hard. Okay, I'll, I'll just, I'll just, you know, stick with Bea. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's see our MVP for the second game in this best of three match. Now both of these teams are at match point. We will be seeing is it Rosemary? Is it Bea? Is it is it Annabelle on the Kufra to pick up this MVP? Drum roll, please. Drum roll. <laughs> Okay! Rosemary! Arashi with right, the comeback right. of his own. 13, yes. 2, and 4. 90, almost 90,000 damage dealt. It's crazy because if you look at, uh, if you saw how much damage the Yeev was doing, right? Supposedly, it, with all these fights, with all the back and forths, the Yeev actually did about 87, I believe. It was just a bit lower. But Rosemary was the highest damage dealer in the whole game. That's how much fighting was available for, for her to just immediately just steal away that spot. There was no sieges at all. There wasn't. I, I, but I mean, okay, granted, I understand why Rosemary was able to get the MVP. But, you know, an argument can be made for a lot of the other members too, right? Because technically, in the final sequence of how they're able to, you know, keep put in the final nail in the coffin for Indonesia was on the play made by Annabelle on the Kufra, which basically Vivian was unable to do in the first game where she picked up the Kufra. So big shout out to Annabelle on the Kufra, big shout out as well mm -hmm. to Bea, uh, despite not being put on the Paquito that we saw was such a power pick for her in game number one. In game number two, she pulls up something like the Khalid that did so well, just really capitalizing over the overconfidence from Indonesia in game number two. Yeah, the composition in the beginning already seems a bit overconfident. Only a single real damage dealer, and even a, a Kadira, right, an assassin. Considering the fact that R on the Claude is mobile and with the Purify as well, there isn't really a, a, a very easy target for her to look for in the middle of those fights. That definitely played a big role as well, because once the skills are already blasted out, that's the end of the impact for Sinny compared to game one where on the low ye can just keep tossing out uh, dispersions and rotations. And on that note, let's take a look at the post game stats as well, right? Specifically, this is this is special for you guys at back at home, ladies and gentlemen. We have a, you know, statistics prepared for you guys to have a little bit of a sneak peek as to what Arashi was talking about earlier on, right? You talked about uh, the damage that was given we do see a little bit more information on that 18 minute game 47 seconds it was almost a 19 minute game you can see like this was one of the things that was quite confusing arashi in the early stage of the game indonesia was leading with kills and they were also leading with objectives but again malaysia was actually still holding on to the gold lead just because of that style, right? The fights that kept happening, for the most part, I mean, if you look at the gold obtained from minions and creeps, there isn't a lot of farming. Uh, the, the gold gained from minions and creeps for the side of Indonesia is uh, a lot lower still. So that's another addition to the advantage that Malaysia were able to actually get by winning out in these fights. It really felt like in the end, it's a damage output issue because for Malaysia, even when we did see R get taken out or get zoned away from a fight, 
uh, the, the Khalid can do damage, Rosemary can do damage, uh, so can Ecstatic on the Eve. So, despite the fact that they have no real big front line, maybe even was the cause that baited Indonesia to just keep going in. Because they know that, in theory, there's no... Not, not a single hero on the side of Malaysia can be called a pure tank. The Kufra, maybe, but more used for utility, right? So, I think Indonesia just kept going in because they know that whoever they connect with, uh, that gets person done by Sini and Shell or gets hit by Vival, that could be uh, yet another kill that they can put in their pocket. So, unfortunately, until the late, late game, it makes the win condition for Malaysia just that much more straightforward. And that's the last thing you want to do against a team as dangerous and as competent as these uh, teams we're watching right now. Because they will immediately identify it and go for it. You can see that from the middle of the game, Bea and the rest of Malaysia are already having their eyes on Shell, just waiting for the right time to catch her out or at least zone her away so that their team can actually get the advantage. You know, at least if they want to go for the commitment onto a 4-1, as in fully commit onto the, onto the defense for Shell, at least have Shell pick up something a little bit more defensive for her battle spell. Right, because I felt like the Inspire just again was way too greedy. But I mean, that's a problem that can be seen from the draft as well, right? The fact that she was the sole damage dealer. Remember, exactly. the Kadira can't really help out with that either. So maybe she was pressured to go for the Inspire to just to get a bit more damage. And, and to be fair, in the 1v2s in the early game, we saw that that Inspire was... Uh, critical in ensuring that she was able to survive and even outplay uh, like a gank 1v2 so there is value to be had but i feel like overall as a draft that's where the problem really began yeah i agree it's just it's just a, such a shame right because sure you win out in these 1v2s and there were so many moments where uh malaysia tried to go for the pickoffs on the shell but she was able to outplay like you mentioned but in the grand scheme of things, if you're the sole damage dealer and you don't have the purify with so much dive on the side of Malaysia, it just makes the winning condition for Malaysia a lot easier, right? Because you have the Khalid to dive in, you also have uh, the Kufra to dive in. There's just so many tools that Malaysia could have utilized to, you know, take away that single winning condition that Indonesia had, which was, you know, protect the Moscow at all costs, protect Shell at all costs, and it really just didn't pay off for them. And I have to say, despite the fact that there was a Uranus that's usually so pesky to deal with, I don't know if that's just the way it's being played or the condition of the game overall, but Malaysia relatively did not really have a lot of issues dealing with the, the macro play the push coming in from the uranus on the far side it could be because the uranus wasn't going for a two wave cut a double wave cut in the base or something of that nature but they just want to fight aggression with aggression even if they can't really go for uh, the the macro play and match that push they go straight for the lord and they just focus it down and if indonesia wants to go for a 50 50 they're very happy to oblige for that 50-50. And even if they don't get the Lord, they are going to go and chase down the members of Indonesia. I feel like that's just the way they plan out the game, at least in the mid game, right? It doesn't matter. Just go for the Lord immediately. If they don't try and fight us, we get the Lord. If they come in late, we get the Lord. If it's a 50-50, then it's a 50-50. But looking at the compositions, we can just take out their members one by one. And we have chases, we have movement speed coming in from the Roger, we have slows coming in from Ecstatic on uh, the Yeeve as well. There's a lot of ways for Malaysia to catch up to Indonesia. And they've been catching up real good, right? Mm. I, technically, they can go in for a reverse sweep once again, something that we've been talking about earlier oh on as well. I mean, you predicted, we, we both predicted the Philippines to win in match number one. <laughs> Don't Cambodia, say it. reverse sweep. And they were the, the favorites to win that match and one of the favorites to win the entire championship. And now we're coming into our second semifinals here in the playoffs. And we also predicted Indonesia to win. And Indonesia did pick up game number one. Oh, and then man. Malaysia equalized in game number two that's uh, a big momentum shift for malaysia that's that's some you know men mental mental fortitude coming through from malaysia and you know that might just actually 
drop the momentum that Indonesia is so used to, right? Because it's been so long since they dropped a game, Arashi. It's been so long since they dropped a game. It's, it was always them versus everybody. Them always sitting up at top. Imagine having that be like the history of you with your team and suddenly a team takes a game from you. Definitely a mental shocker. And for Indonesia, they got to recover here. By all means, they did lose, but their composition, like we said, is quite unorthodox, right? It's quite unusual from the composition itself to the selections, like the Uranus that came out of nowhere. You know, we were expecting playmakers. We were expecting big crowd control, not a lumbering giant that just regens the whole time. So now that we are in the final game here, this is where all the cards are on the table, man. The chips are absolutely down. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Arlet Export going to be banned out now for Indonesia as they are back in first pick, ladies and gentlemen. The Ling going to be respected once again. One of the highlights we would say for this matchup is the fact that the Roger was left open for Malaysia to pick up earlier on. And with the Roger picking up that MVP as well, with the flexibility that the Roger also has, I think we've been explaining about this time and time again. That flex mm -hmm. potential in the drafts has just been so valuable for teams that are able to get their hands on the Rodgers. So with Malaysia in the next few bands, I think last time they went in for Chip, Ling, and the Yu Zong. The Chip was actually left open. Now the Harith gets banned out. And now what is left? I think Vexana was a choice last time around, but I don't think they should go for the Vexana here. Luo Yi is also still an option to take here, Ashi. I think the Luo Yi can still be a great option. Oh man, we have to see though, because I feel like Malaysia has just made a very clear statement that if you want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and play the rough game, the brawl, we have you beat. That's that's our game, right? The Langar style, that's, that's <laughs> our calling card, not you guys. So I think for Indonesia, there might be a... a an adaptation here to try and go for a more calculated style that might really work out. But to do so, you gotta be forced to pick some of these uh, safer heroes that can play a bit more defensive. And considering that, oh, Malaysia has the Yu Zong and the Fredrin now, it's gonna be quite difficult. Yeah, the Fredrin and the Yu Zong has been picked up, but now with the Luo Yi still open, Indonesia, if they want to go in for the early fight, if they want to go in for the early objectives, pick up, great, a Tarizla, right, before it gets banned out into the second phase, especially in that 1v1 against the Yu Zong. And by the way, for Indonesia, this Tarizla is flex. Tarizla has been hmm. played in the mid lane by Sini. So that's also a layer of flexibility that this team has with the Roger. Meanwhile, for Malaysia, we we, we know where, where they are going, right? Fredrin, Jungle, Yuzong in the EXP lane. Joke's on you, it's a gold lane, Yuzong. Just kidding. <laughs> Imagine though, right? Imagine. But for now, for Indonesia, they're going for this aggressive style. They have the Roger and they're defaulting back to his Mathilda. This is a tool that is great if you don't want to go for a straightforward fight, when you want to make it confusing, you know, the last game was confusing enough, but if Indonesia wants to make it a bit more confusing, the guiding win can be a valuable tool. And they're able to get their hands on the Terizla. It was, uh, I believe it was, was it banned away? I believe it was, it was, it was yeah. respected it was for sure. It was banned out by Indonesia in the second phase. Right, so they get, they get their hands on that main frontliner. They can contest grounds uh, against the aggressive composition of Malaysia. But for Malaysia, they want to go for the Kufra again. We talked about how Annabelle was able to secure quite literally a game-winning play for their side. Now you're seeing a lot of emphasis on the goal lane here. There's a chance that Malaysia are trying to pick up the cloth for themselves. We saw R perform really well on it. Uh, taking it away from Shell would be great as well. Kind of forcing the Roger to be put in that gold lane can still be a, a an angle that Malaysia will be trying to do instead. Also remember, right? Luo Yi, Valentina, and Faramis have been left untouched so far. That still also can cause a, a, a huge impact into their gameplay. But again, the Natan gets also banned away as, oh. as well as the Kalar. So they are eliminating these choices for the gold lane. 
Arashi, hmm? I hope you're not right. I hope it's not a Yuzong in. No way! The Come lane, on. Right? I mean, I mean, there is still a possibility for like the Brody to show up. I think the Clint has done quite well, but that was mm -hmm. before the patch. Uh, for the MLBB women scene, that was before the patch. We saw the Clint do really well in the early game, and could definitely benefit from the Malefic Gun. By the way, if they want to explore new items. Oof. Do we want to explore new items when all of this is at stake right now with Turner? I feel like it's a bit too yeah. delicate. In fact, I assume true, that true. both teams will be pulling out their A game. They went with the Faramis though, so expecting, suspecting that Malaysia will be going for that Death Ball style yet again. All things considered, though, the Minotaur is still available, but you no, know, both teams already have a Roamer, so that won't really be uh, the case. I feel like the mid lane here becomes the big question. If they want to go for fights like that, the low Yi still is a very solid pick. If they don't want to go for it, then maybe something like a Lilia with a bit more security, a bit more output potential. I I'm just saying, by the way, if something, if you want something crazy, imagine if a Kagura shows up right now. That's also going to be like a wow moment, but I don't think so. Yeah, we saw the Kagura come out earlier on, and it was it was a monster. Uh. I think I'm going to have you know nightmares about it, but. They go for something quite, you know, standard, Valentina, to be able to, you know, capitalize over these resources that Indonesia has gone for. We have the Circling Eagle from the Matilda. We also have the Penalty Zone. Whoa, oh! whoa, 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 whoa! Whoa, no whoa, okay, huh? okay, okay, okay. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, sorry, I went a little bit informal there, but Zask recently had a change. Right, Arashi, are you familiar with this change that, that Zask now has? Wait, which change are you talking about? So now the uh -huh. the oh man I don't even we haven't seen Zas for so long I don't even remember the names of the skills but you know the the little alien that pops in it now does the nightmare constant spawn? see Clint right yeah the nightmare spawn does constant DPS damage and also has a stun if you pair it in with skill two of Zask and now if she if he wants to go in for the ultimate you don't have to. Descent. That one, Dominator's Descent. You don't have to place it where the Nightmare Spawn is, but the, what is it called? Dominator's Descent will follow where you put the Dominator's Descent and then the Nightmare Spawn will follow. So it's a lot more versatile when you go in for these plays. And it's such okay. a good lane bully. Oh, it's, it's oh man, I didn't expect this aspect to come up, but oh man, I'm excited, Arashi, sorry. I mean, I I'm using I... it. I occasionally play the Zask as well, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, I guess those changes will definitely make a big difference. The carry, though, out of nowhere for Malaysia to try and deal with the Terizla, that makes sense. But now it's a bit different, man, for Indonesia. That Zask pick will just give so much fighting power because technically you can go into the Dominator's Descent, you can get out of it, and it's still going to stay there and just keep doing damage, right? Along with the... Uh, the Nightmare spawn. So there are ways for Sini now to do some damage, do some mind games, and be relatively safe. That's the, the, the big part that's kind of important right here. So it's going to be interesting how to, how the lane is going to go because the Nightmare spawn can be cleared relatively fast. And if you just keep putting it down without any thought, technically it gives your opponent gold. So, you know, you got to be a bit more calculative about it. Sure, sure. That's also definitely a factor that we also need to, you know, keep in mind. But man, I was thinking that this Zas would pop in in the gold lane, Arashi. Hmm. Really? Well, I, 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 yeah, because I see it as a good lane bully, right? The range is insane, right? That early game damage is also quite insane. Good clear as well. If if we're looking at a, a possible bully in the gold lane, if we're thinking about a mage as a bully in the gold lane, then. You know, we've seen a lot of Chang'as recently, but I thought maybe the Zask would fit quite well in the gold lane, but we are going to see in the mid lane. You know, I'll take what I can get, ladies and gentlemen, for the final match in the playoffs of this best of three series, the decider game as to who will be able to move forward, who will be able to get that last slot in for WEC all the way in Riyadh in the later portion of this year. Everything hangs in the balance and everything is going to depend on how this game goes. Will it be Indonesia moving forward as one of the tournament favorites or will it be Malaysia being able to take down the titans of the story and go in as underdogs with Cambodia to Riyadh?
Well, first of all, you can feel the spirit coming in from Indonesia because they are going with three war cries in their emblem setup. They are here to try and do as much damage as possible. And you can see the Nightmare spawn already proving to be an absolute nuisance for the side of Malaysia. For now, it's going to be a, a bit similar, a bit safe. But look at that. Tyrant's Revenge, though. Vivo will be actually unable to secure that Litho due to that interference. For now, Ecstatic. Whoa, hang on a minute. See? Dude. Yeah, Ecstatic is taking a lot more damage than I think is uh, is healthy for her. But we have to wait and see here. Especially in the gold lane and EXP lane. It's a bit of a skill matchup. And whoever comes out on top will dictate how the team is able to really move around the map. And I think a lot of eyes are definitely on that gold lane. I mean, technically the gold lane isn't too much of a skill matchup, right? Wouldn't you think that the Clint does better in the early game as compared to the carry? Yeah, especially in the gold lane, it's, it's a bit more one-sided. The EXP lane, though, is where you can yeah. see this dueling happening. But considering the roamers occasionally drop by to that gold lane, is there a chance for teams to really swing the balance in their favor? Rosemary, though, coming in for a gank right there. Fumi Echo already forced to use the flicker, so the flicker penalty zone combo won't be available. I live... Oh, wait a second. Rosemary goes in very deep here onto Fumi Echo. No escape tools. Oppressor's Wrath tanked up. But look at the response though. Rival with the damage coming in. It's a double. Going to be traded two for one, uh, one for one so far. Look at the rest of the team though. Jumping into it. Ecstatic. No circling eagle just yet. But Vival is on the hunt. Gets the killing spree. Indonesia starting out strong with that Roger pick. Definitely. And even in the gold lane, right? We do see R almost going in for a recall with how much damage she's receiving. Let's jump back into here as Annabelle looks in for another pick. Healthy zone lose Annabelle though, but Bea, the menace, goes in towards the back line. Won't be able to find anything so far. Pulls back away. And for even for game three right now, you can see that it's about respawning and going straight into the fighting once more for both these teams. Yeah, the brawls, so brawl centric, so Ooh. brawl heavy. And going back into the mid lane, right? Ecstatic is on the Valentina, who naturally has a little bit more of a regen when she goes in for her dashes, right? Her abilities. But even then, the damage coming in from Cindy on the Zask has been just a pain to deal with as she tries to go in for the clear. But Cindy falling a little bit behind in the rotations. And so. You can oh. see Ecstatic going to be able to have a little bit more say in that top lane to try and punish Shell and give the carry a little bit of a fighting chance in these early parts of the game. It's still going to be the little taken by the side of Malaysia though. Vivian looking for a play here towards Annabelle. It's going really deep though. I don't think they're ready for that. Rosemary waiting to try and ambush to make a play for the team as R and Shell just keep duking it out. You can see that both teams are playing a lot more careful though, but Rosemary with the Thunderbolt rush hinting at her willingness to try and go for a big fight. Look at the stun onto Annabelle with a Domineer's Descent as well. Rosemary tries to get involved, tries to peel, but look at the damage. Cine forced to back away already. That's a great sequence for both these teams, showing that they are absolutely aware of the split-second fight decisions. Yeah, the adaptations are going to be very important for both of these teams, as Indonesia so far does have a gold lead, but... It's a very small one, right? 901k here in the first four minutes of the game. Both of these teams are once again going to be collapsing onto the turtle that will spawn in under six seconds. Rosemary level seven at the moment, Vival a level ahead, but it looks like Rosemary has been getting a lot more retributions down. Vival kind of struggling in that regard, so in this 50-50, we'll see who will be able to get that better trade as Annabelle already with the charge. Dropping onto Fumi Echo, but not fully committing onto it. Trying to just reduce that HP bar. It will be so much more difficult to deal with with the body of Smith. Or Fumi Echo, but look at the both. Oh, penalty zone into the pit though with the Black Dragon from right above everyone. The Petrimate comes through as well. The turtle falls into the hands of Indonesia. But look at the Dominus Descent doing damage as much as possible. But Malaysia kite back away from it. Circling Eagle still from Vivian to try and get onto Rosemary. As Viva picks up a kill, comes in for the hunt. But Vivian steals it away. Indonesia asserting dominance right here in the team fighting prowess. 
one for two trade ladies and gentlemen you can even consider it a one for three trade with indonesia being able to pick up that neutral objective so a perfect turtle so far as we're going to take a look into the replay as to how this went down because initially malaysia did have a proper setup but with the dominated descent coming through the damage the zoning away from the yuzong as well was very imperative to how this actually panned down unfortunately they couldn't land in an, an additional kill onto vival that could have been a 5-0-1 for her. And of course, the Roger will take all the kills she can get to go in for that snowball that is required for her to have a little bit more dominance in this early game. But of course, already at a 4-0-1 is looking quite bright for her as Annabelle goes in for another charge. Ooh. It looks like Malaysia are going to be quick to get in. But what happened in the opposite side of the map? That's a trade over as Malaysia going to be picking up that turret as well in the bottom side of the map. All things considered, great trade for Malaysia right there to understand that they're not really winning out in these fights, going for trades. But look at Sinny here, unsatisfied with only a single turret, going for one more along with Shell. They might just take it down purely by brute forcing it, even though there's no minions. The Nightmare Respawn will allow them to go for it, but Annabelle goes in to try and go for a punish. The Black Dragon form from Bea comes in as well. Sinny, no real Dominator's Descent just yet. Won't be jumped on though, fortunately for her. And Indonesia, they got a lot of wins there in that sequence. That was quite lucky, would you Ooh. not think? Oh, what is that damage onto Ecstatic? She's got so low and she's gonna force in a recall. Not the best time to go for a recall as you wanna go and set up for the next neutral objective. But this will be another turtle given over to the hands of Indonesia. A perfect turtle as Annabelle fails to land it onto Fumi Echo here. And here, Malaysia looks like they're looking for a trade in a 3v1 situation. Fumi Echo, how is she faring? Meanwhile, in the mid lane. Both teams just going for dives at the same time in the mid lane, though. It's going to be Bea following through with the death double kill for Vival. And on top, Fumi Echo does not care, man. A Terizla under the turret? Who are you fooling? She ain't going down. Malaysia rotating to try and save their turret, but Indonesia already working down on it. Shell was at the end of the train there, leaving the danger zone. But Annabelle is struggling to really find the right targets here for her team. 6k gold lead now built in for Indonesia. They are ruthless. In the last few minutes of this game, really taking it into their hands with collapsing onto these structures, collapsing onto these objectives really quickly. And that's something that we've been used to seeing from Indonesia. So they really have their eyes on the prize here. They're really taking this as serious oh. as they possibly can. But Vivian will be able to escape out of that initiation play from Annabelle. And again, those, you know, those spawns are just so great at opening up these maps, opening up these bushes that time and time again have been capitalized over for Mass. And we have yet to see a big play from Bea on this Yuzong. I mean, we saw a big Black Dragon form Furious Dive Petrify combo, but it just wasn't enough right now considering how aggressively uh, Indonesia is playing. And the fact that Sini is just not vulnerable at all due to the Dominator's Descent just makes the game a lot different than a usual game, I would say. Now, Vivian picks up the Enchanted Talisman as well, so the cooldown on the Guiding Wind will be something that Malaysia needs to take, uh, take notice of as Vival. Even though the Lord is spawning soon, she is the one sent over to clear. And look at the damage of a Rosemary. She's trying to sustain back up, dashing out of the danger zone. And as as ordered, Eterna, there's going to be a, a jump on towards the backline of Indonesia. But in the end, Bea cannot get it done. R follows soon as well. And that's going to be Annabelle left alone in the back shell. Spots her, tries to go for it as well. But she won't uh, agree for it. They just go straight for the Lord. Beautiful penalty zone and beautiful follow-up as it looks like Vivian is on the chase there to get to Annabelle. They know it's a little bit too risky and they will fall back. But in the grand scheme of things, that was a big win once again for Indonesia in the 10th minute of the game. And even if Malaysia stood fast, stayed stoic in that team fight, Vival is a few levels ahead here. She's actually three levels ahead of Rosemary at this point. So not necessarily a 50-50 in that retribution battle, despite mm -hmm. Rosemary's success on her retry. It's just she's falling far too behind. 
She needs to catch up on that EXP to eventually go in for this. But that's going to be the first Lord of the game spawning in the mid lane, ladies and gentlemen. And it looks like Malaysia are just waiting patiently to go in for the defense. Both teams just waiting around here. Trying to make sure they stop the Lord from doing damage to the turrets. But Indonesia will zone away the members of Malaysia and ensure that that is what happens. It's a three-way push right now. And with the Nightmare spawn used to try to buy a bit more time, do a bit more damage. It's going to be a penalty zone though. Rosemary won't be able to use the Prince's Wrath. And so will Ecstatic just immediately claw down, denied. They are... Trying to go into the Black Dragon form, but look at the HP bars, immediately shredded down. That's the stun coming in as well. Indonesia barreling through immediately. They pick up one more kill, and they're going straight for the crystal. The Lord untouched. Indonesia at 11 minutes has shut down Malaysia. And it's official, ladies and gentlemen, Indonesia take that final slot here in the playoffs and secure their ticket to WEC Riyadh. They have qualified from the Opens and they have pushed forward through the group stage, pushed forward through the playoffs and will be the representatives of Indonesia in the international scene once again at WEC. But that was so close. For Malaysia, mm -hmm. I think all of the Indonesian fans all around the world are actually shaking at this moment, right? Seeing how far and how much Malaysia had dominance over Indonesia. It was so, so close, Arashi, but a 2-1 a victory for Indonesia at the end of the day. Dude, the Zask pick, I think, really threw him off, man. It's so weird because now... The mid laner is no longer vulnerable. There's an extra bit of damage coming through. And even if Sini leaves, the damage is still coming, uh, still being dealt. And technically when she dies, she spawns another nightmarish spawn as well. A lot of different, like a new different look. It's almost like going up against a Kagura, but a different style. She even landed the big stun in the end right there to really start off the ending sequence. I, we got to take a look at some of the highlights, man. That happened so fast. 11 minutes. Yeah, that's why I was so hyped. I was so hyped seeing the Zask being picked up. I was like, all right. I saw promise in the Zask after the patch. And I thought maybe we'll see it in the gold lane. But, you know, in the mid lane, I'll take what I can get. So let's take a look at those highlights. Ladies and gentlemen, producer, you know, please cue us in. Because we, we just can't wait to see that dominating game from Indonesia. After Malaysia was able to force that game number three from game number two. This was that early fight engagement there where they were jumping on Fumi Echo, but that's the problem when you're trying to gank a Terizla. It usually takes just so much time for you to really secure the kill that the backup really arrives. And in true Malaysian fashion, it just becomes an all-out brawl yet again. And Bea, now that the ultimate just isn't as surprising, as fast, uh, as fast paced as a Raging Sandstorm or, or a Bakito's Knockout Strike, it's a whole different style that she was struggling to really use to try and punish uh, Vival, Shell, and Sini, and it's partially due to the selection of heroes as well. For sure, for sure. And you know, the Roger once again being a nuisance, showing us once again why this Roger is such a big priority. Sure, it does great in the gold lane, but as you can see here in the jungle, that's where the Roger currently just really shines and excels. So much uh, snowballing potential in the early stage of the game, so much... Uh, utilization you can you Ooh. know utilize this roger for more neutral objectives you can also utilize this roger in for a little bit more kill pressure it's just an all-arounder very fast clear as well and that's just why the roger has been always respected or banned out in from the first phase of the drafts when that fight Cine, again it's almost like a valentina in a way that the damage is just so subtle you don't really notice it and before you know it you get just immediately deleted and right here with the lord in Tao, R tries to clear it out, but it's just too difficult. And look at that stun, man. The Dominator's Descent jump to the front for that stun was what started it off. And you're seeing the, I don't know, the consequences of this Zask, right? The fact that you're not used to it, you're not used to the range, the skill set. That is what Indonesia has pulled out of the hat for their, I don't know, surprise magic trick. And they have taken Malaysia out in dominant fashion after two very intense games you know no matter what happens you know what no matter the results that we receive today for malaysia i still want to stand true and just you know announce it for everyone in the world to know 
and I'm a uh-huh. big fan of Bea, and I hope I get to see her in the future, man. Because oh, sure, yeah. her presence in game number three was not as vivid as game number one and game number two, but man, game number one and game number two, her Paquito and her Khalid, that alone was enough to really just send shivers down my spine, and I think it's going to follow me into my nightmares, as is the Kogura that we saw earlier on. But this is the match summary. 11 minutes after an 18-minute game, after a 19-minute game for game number three, Indonesia meant business. They pulled out all their cards. They took it as serious as possible. Their head was in the game, and they were able to close it out in 11 minutes with Shell Black on the Clint. This was one of the heroes that we saw her utilize back at SPS, one of her high-priority heroes, especially if she wants an early game lead. When the Moskovs, when the Harris are banned out, she usually falls back onto this Clint pick that we've seen her find a lot of success on. And Sini, like you mentioned with the Sask, was just so clutch. One of the main issues that Malaysia was facing, especially on the Valentine, I think the first wave that hit, right? The first uh, attempt at the clear between Ecstatic and Sini was very telling as to the potential of Zask. And hopefully we'll see what the Zask has to offer later on in the future, whether or not the maybe the MLB so. men's will pick it up or not. But the MVP is ready. Arashi, any predictions? I think it has to be Sini, man. No bias. There you go. That's the Zask we were talking about. 3-0 and 12. And man, there were some moments in this game where I guess Malaysia are suited. I just used it at Brawl. And they stand in that Dominator's descent. And even the tankiest of members, they get shredded down slowly but surely, man. That the beam that comes from the Dominator's descent and the Nightmare respawn, it doesn't tick per second, you know? It, it's like, it's a straight laser. And you just yeah. gotta get out. That's one of the main changes to the Zas, one of the main updates to the Zas, right? And I thought that that's why maybe the Zas could be viable in this uh, meta. But Arashi, you know, as an analyst and of course as a mage player, look at the items, right? Sure, a penetration boots, that's that's fine and dandy, but her next item was Divine Glaive? Like, who, who does that? Do you normally itemize straight into the Divine Glaive without going for base magical damage? I mean, I don't, but considering the hit of the Zask, right, you saw that even straight with the Divine Glaive, there was a lot of base damage already available. So I guess considering the fact that there's a lot of beefy members from the side of Malaysia, that's the option she goes for because the base damage is good enough and the Divine Glaive gives you magical power as well. So it's not about nuking them outright. It's about placing down these spawns and the, dom- the Dominator's Descent, the DD, at the right position. And as long as it just stands the there, Ds, yeah. Malaysia will be forced to either take a lot of damage over time eventually, or they're going to be forced to use some time and some effort, some damage to clear out that the, the summon, right, the spawn. And I think that is such a perfect solution for a team that just loves to brawl, right? Bring in another you know another factor right bring in more people technically so let's bring the people that won that match right arashi let's call indonesia right now we'll see who we're gonna be talking to but ring ring indonesia are you there hello Hello. everybody (laughs) hang on i gotta adjust my audio again all right well, congratulations, Indonesia, for that decisive victory again. I think uh, we've seen you a lot in all these interviews, especially in the MLBB female scene. But how did it feel to go that far into a full best of three? Like, did you expect it to go full best of three, or did you think that you would get win it in a two zero victory? Actually, we did not expect it to be like 2-1. Uh, the first, the, uh, in the first game, the box shop pick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was unexpected. Yeah, it was unexpected because the box shop pick was out of the box so especially mm-hmm. where we are using links so the box here is really a surprising pick and yeah 
menyulitkan kufrah. Eh ya, and bikin kufrah feeder. No, no, no. No, no. She's she's saying Vivian is saying that it made it very hard for her to utilize the kufra, which is actually something that we kind of noticed, right? It looked like the kufra was struggling a bit. It was very uncharacteristic to the Vivian yeah. that we know and love. But by the way, sh where's Shell? Shell mana? Shell <laughs> mana? Where's she hiding? At enemy's base. Okay, big flex there, Arashi. Maybe you have the next question. I think we gotta answer. Uh, we gotta ask a question that everyone else is asking about. Like, what? Where did the where did the zest come from, man? Whose idea was that? That's Philip. Mm. That's Philip. Yeah. will be tell you. Oh. you okay. Know power. <laughs> Please do. Oh. <laughs> she says it's her hero power, hundred percent win rate. <laughs> wow. I mean, you saw the okay. effect in those fights, man. It's a great solution against the aggressive fighting composition. Uh, what did the coaching staff have to say when did what was going on there? Did you say like, "I want to pick Zask," or did the coach go like, "Hey, yo, uh, the Zask is like a power pick for you. Like, why don't you bring it out?" Like, whose call was it? What was the coaching staff's reaction? Yeah, because uh, I saw the game was going to one and one, and I think it's time to. We bring our secret weapon. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Nice. No, we have so many secret kitchen. <laughs> secret kitchen. Weapon. <laughs> oh, okay. Se secret weapon. She meant secret weapon, but she said secret kitchen. Okay, very interesting. By the way, is that Susu Gajah? Is is that your coach right now? Wait, Susu Gajah. Yes. Elephant milk. Oh, okay. <laughs> And is is who's 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 in, who's in front of Susu Gaja? Is it Dewa? It yeah. is. Dewa. Oh, okay. So this is this literally <laughs> this is literally like Team Vitality lineup, Arashi. Yeah, and fun fact: I actually met with Susu Gaja and Dewa a while back, and they seem really confident. So. Seeing how this um, match played out, was this according to your expectations, or were you actually, you know, quite nervous, quite worried? Because this is the uh, the decider to get that final title that you guys don't have yet, right? The ISF title. Uh, so long, can you? <laughs> oh. Did you expect the match to be that close? Were you worried? Uh, our our coach is overconfident. Yeah, they're too confident. I see. Yes. And they Sounds got like outdrawn by a box shit. Yeah. And my no, so our thing is just don't do <laughs> to our to our enemies, please don't ban Ling. Because uh. people cannot use Ling. Oh <laughs> that's right, baby. I see. <laughs> Alright. All right. Any any were other follow-up questions you... right here? I I have a I have a I have a one question, one more question, right? Um in game number two, when Malaysia won. Were you guys nervous? Was there a moment where you're like, okay, we've been undefeated for so long, we've been winning for so long, Malaysia finally looks like they're kind of leveling with us? Was there a moment in your heads individually like, okay, we're in a bit of trouble, I think Malaysia can win this match? No, not at all. No. But we said hmm. it's time to use our zest. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to bring up our Still. All right. So, final question, uh, Team Indonesia. Do you have any messages to your fans, your worldwide fans out there that are anticipating your presence at WEC in Riyadh? Yeah. Yeah. Vivian would like to say something to the. Okay. <laughs> Vivian, you, harus ngomong pakai bahasa Inggris ya. You will waiting for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we'll be waiting. We'll be waiting. We'll be waiting at WEC for uh, Vivian, okay? For her message in English. But thank you so much once again, Team Indonesia. Thank you so much 
uh, for your performance. It was exceptional as well. Congratulations and have a great rest because the next time we'll be seeing you, we'll be seeing you at Riyadh. So prepare more strats. We're excited to see the Zask again. Okay. So goodbye. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Ah. No, no one to waiting. <laughs> no, no one to waiting. <laughs> oh man, I swear. Wow. Their interview and uh, the interview uh, from Team Indonesia on the male scene was also as chaotic, by the way. Oh yeah? Quite interesting, man. I mean, it's great to see that they're in great spirits though, right? They did say that they weren't too worried, too nervous. Uh, you know, we'll take them at face value for now. But yeah, it's great to see that they're that confident. They're still united. And it didn't seem like they were really under a lot of pressure right it's like a day in the office and they're gonna need that composure if they want to go again out to the international stage because at that point they are the hunted right they are the ones with the targets on their back like the best team beat them first and then you can talk is what some people would say and it's great that they are still as confident as that, right? Because even for us as casters, we were looking at the game and we we're kind of like, okay, maybe this is the moment, the moment that like literally everybody has been kind of anticipating the moment mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. Indonesia falls down finally after so many years of dominance. But I mean, even there, they were making jokes about the coach. It, it was the coach's fault. Uh, you don't need to bang the, the ling against us because none of us can play the ling properly. So they were still in very high spirits and that just shows the confidence that they have coming into the next portion of ISF. But ladies and gentlemen, I think this does mark the end of the Asian qualifiers. We've been accompanying Aww. you with the, you know, the male scene and now we're coming to wrap up the women's scene and it is official congratulations to indonesia and of course congratulations to cambodia for winning it out here in the playoffs being able to make it all the way from the group stage and now qualifying for those tickets to Riyadh WEC over over the nine teams Arashi right we we mentioned about the nine teams that started and now it's Indonesia and Cambodia moving forward so we have an underdog story with Cambodia and of course Indonesia is one of the tournament favorites uh, you know, what, what do you think, Arashi? Any final statements that you want to go for before we close this out? I gotta say, I'm really enjoying like the development of the women's scene. I think every time I get a chance to cast the, the, the lady scene, I always say the same thing, but they really are improving at a very rapid pace. I think if you go back a couple of years ago, no one would believe that that game was played by the ladies team, right? That's not a dig at the ladies, by the way. That's just the way it was back then. So I'm looking forward to different strats, uh, different picks all together. And if they can really separate, like develop a whole different meta that's just like completely different to the male uh, scene, I feel like that's a very welcome, welcome situation as well. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Team Indonesia go to the next level. And I, I want to see if they can actually do it, right? They get a full gauntlet and go for the snap. Yeah. Thank you, Arashi, once again. It's been a pleasure to cast with you today, but we're going to wrap it up here as you know we close the Asian qualifiers finally for the online stage, right? We'll see you at the offline stage. So on behalf of Arashi as well, we want to thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you all very soon. Thank you so much. You guys have been watching the ISF Asian Regional Qualifiers. We'll see you in the next part of ISF.